Okay, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, we're gonna get started now. Okay, today we're going to um, talk about participation reports, um, the importance of uh, quality metadata, um, a little bit about adding references to your content registration, and then we'll um, wrap up with um, how to find additional help and support and time for some questions and answers. I'm joined today with my colleagues, Vanessa Fairhurst and Robika Rosaline and Amanda Bartel. So before we get into talking about the participation reports in detail, I wanna talk um, briefly about metadata and why quality metadata is really important. So as a member of Crossref, you're familiar with DOIs for your content. When you join Crossref as a member, you're issued a DOI prefix. You combine this with a suffix to create a DOI, which then becomes active once you register it with us. So though DOIs are important, it's the metadata of your content that really tells a story about that item. And the more complete and accurate the metadata is, the better the chance that your content will be found, cited, linked to, and used by others. Members maintain and update their metadata and can include more information, more metadata as time goes on. When registering content, members supply us with a wide range of metadata. So in the context of Crossref, metadata is information about publications, which we then make available for thousands of other parties to use in the tools and services that they provide. And this metadata will vary based on the type of content that's being registered. Basic metadata um, includes things like titles, authors, publication dates, ISSN, ISBN, anything that describes the content that you're registering. But we also collect non-bibliographic metadata, and that can include things like your reference lists, funding data, ORCIDs, um, clinical trial information, data about relationships between items. And if you're using our Crossmark service, you can register um, information on errata, retractions, or updates. So we ask that you send us as much metadata as possible and it be accurate and clean. The more comprehensive your metadata is, the more likely your content will be discovered. So this metadata enables four things. It's discoverability, reproducibility, research and editorial integrity, and reporting and assessment. The more metadata that you include about a piece of content, the easy it is for others to search and discover. A lot of other organizations use Crossref metadata to build their own tools and services for the research community. Reproducibility um, is very critical. Researchers need to be able to build upon each other's work and verifying and reproducing the results from an early work is helped by metadata um, such as uh, links to funding, protocols, research data, peer review. Um, in addition, using metadata for discovery, um, it also helps determine the integrity of the research, who funded it, what are the affiliations of the authors? Is there a possibility that there's a conflict of interest? And then reporting and assessment can be carried out by a variety of organizations, universities, funders, and this can show the accountability um, and benefits of, of public investment. Um, it provides benchmarking information, it demonstrates compliance with funder mandates, and then it helps to decide which research to fund. And metadata such as um, ROAR, affiliation identifiers, ORCIDs, funding and grant information all help to do this. So where does all the metadata that Crossref collects end up? And there's a lot of different organizations that use it. There's libraries, there's um, author profiling organization sites, social sharing networks, all of the different organization types that you see listed on the slide. Um, and because Crossref metadata is standardized and machine readable, it's useful to a lot of different organizations that make your content more discoverable. The better your metadata is, the more useful it will be to all the many organizations that rely on it. Because now we've talked a bit about metadata, we can look at how um, participation reports can help identify how your organization is doing with regards to metadata completeness. So what are participation reports? Well, they're a place where you can check the metadata that you're registering with CrossF. They're open and they're free to use by anyone. And they allow you to track the levels of metadata over time. And this is handy if you're using a service provider, a sponsor, or if you're not directly responsible for registering the metadata yourself. 
And they allow members to see how they measure up to other members and maybe see where the gaps are so that the metadata can be improved. So why did we create these? They mostly came about because we've been hearing from members that they're not always sure what metadata that they're registering with us. So we decided to make it easier for our members and for ourselves to see what was being registered. And though the data has been available for quite some time um, with, our, with our REST API, not everyone knows how to query using the API. It's not very user-friendly. And the data that's returned is really more geared at machines. Um, so there wasn't an easy interface for people to see the, the, the metadata or the, the data that they're registering. Um, it's easy for our members to see what's missing. They're able to fill in the gaps and update the metadata. And though we ask for folks to, to give us as much metadata as possible, it's difficult for us to ask someone to fix something if they're not sure what's actually missing. So let's take a look now at how the participation reports work. So this is, this is the interface that you'll first see, the crossref.org slash members slash prep is the URL. And you can take a look um, at your own participation report. You, you start typing in the name of your account with Crossref. And this is what um, is the name on your invoice or the name that you used um, on your sponsor member application. So as you start to type it in, the names will appear in the drop down menu and you can select your organization, but you can also view the report of any other Crossref member and you can compare your metadata with theirs. So select your, your organization um, and this is the report that you will see. At the top, you'll see um, the main page and information about the organization. And this is an example of a member's report from eLife. You know, at the top, you can see the name of the organization, the total number of content elements or DOIs that have been registered with us. And it shows the percentage of registered content that has certain metadata elements. And these are the elements that we consider important to make content more useful and discoverable. And these include references, ORCID identifiers, funding information, URLs for licenses and for the similarity check service, um, abstracts and crossmark information if an organization uses that service. And each one has a percentage displayed next to it. <clears throat> That's the percentage of deposits that have that particular metadata item. Each item also has a more info button next to it. So when you click that, it will display information about each indicator with links to our support documentation um, and why that metadata is important and how it can be improved. There's also um, a lot of other information that's available. You can view the report by content type. If you happen to register books, um, journals, um, reports, you can, you can select just data for individual titles. Um, so you can look at, at the metadata for just that title rather than the content, of all of the content. And this is important because there might be different editors depositing for each journal and they may not collect or include the same metadata as each other in their deposits. On the right side of the report, you can also choose between viewing the statistics for the current content items, which are those published in the last two years, and that's the default setting, or your back file content, which is that what's older than two years. Um, or you can look at it combined, um, all content that's registered all, over time. Um, it's important to note that not all fields will be populated for all types. Um, for example, uh, content, older content from say 1960 is not necessarily gonna have an ORCID ID for the authors. Um, and some types of publications, they might not have abstracts or some back content um, won't have necessarily the funding detail. So now you can, you know how to view your own metadata record and you can see the areas that need improvement and where you can add more metadata. And there's never a fee to update or add metadata to existing records. Um, so today we're gonna to look at one particular area which is um, depositing reference metadata. So one of the best ways to improve your metadata is to register your references. And what this means is including them as part of your metadata deposit. You can also go back and add them to existing deposits. So references give researchers um, and other users of Crossref metadata a really vital data point to find your content, which in turn increases your chances of your content being read and used. So the benefits of registering references would include making your content more discoverable, enabling research evaluation of research, helping with citation counts, 
and evaluating research trends. References are an important part of your metadata record, but they're also required if you wanted to use our cited by service. You can include um, references in the initial deposit, or you can go back and add them to an existing deposit. And there's a few ways to do this. Um, there's, if you have, if you use OJS and um, versions 3.1.2 or later, you can use the OJS reference plugin. We also have um, a tool called the Simple Text Query Form, which is used to match and deposit um, references to an existing record. And then of course, this direct deposit of, of XML. Um, and we'll look at the OJS and the Simple Text Query Form um, in a little bit of detail. So first up, um, I know a lot of you use the OJS platform to register your journals. So as well as the DOI content registration plugin, uh, PKP and Crossref developed a plugin for reference linking and depositing references. So like I said, if you're using 3.1.2 or later, you can find the Crossref reference linking plugin in the plugin gallery um, that's shown on the slide. The plugin will automatically add references to the DOI record. Additionally, um, when they're submitted, Crossref will automatically check and display any DOIs for the submitted references. Now, not all content is going to have, um, have, will have been registered with us, but if it is, and it has a DOI, then that will be returned and um, for the submitted reference. And the plugin will also display the reference list on the landing page of the article in OJS. Um, next up, the simple to query form allows you to both find DOIs for your references and add them to the metadata for a DOI that you've already, see, already registered with us. You can simply um, copy and paste your reference list into, um, into the box, click submit, and then we'll bring back a list of references plus matching DOIs. Again, not all references are gonna have DOIs, but if it is, that will be displayed in the result. Um, you can then deposit the references by selecting the deposit button, and it will ask you for a couple of um, pieces of information, the email address, the parent DOI for the content item that you wanna add the references to, and then the account credentials. And you can use this form even if you registered your content with OJS. Um, so the next step, um, check your own participation report. Again, the link is here, crosshack.org slash members slash prep, and you can see how you're doing. You can update your missing metadata. Um, again, there's no charge to update or add metadata to an existing deposit. And we do ask that you register as much metadata as possible. Um, if you need further help or information, you can refer to our support documentation um, at the top of, you can see it on the page on the slide here. Um, if you have a specific technical question, you can email our support team at support at and we can get back to you. We also encourage you to check out our community forum where you can post questions to the group um, and you can post these in English or in any other language. Um, we also have um, a page about um, upcoming webinars and recordings from previous events if you were interested in any other information. So that is um, our webinar today. Um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A um, and we can um, answer them there or live, depending on what the question might be. Vanessa's popped the link for the participation reports into the chat. Um, and as she did mention, we, we will send out the slides um, and make the recording available as well if you wanted to go and um, check out anything that we've talked about today.
Okay, well, if there's no other questions, um, we'll end for today. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, and we will make the slides and the um, recording available. Um, thank you, Vanessa and Rebecca for joining and for everyone of our attendees is joining as well.